for the cold pack lab. So the intent of this lab is to help you identify which one of these chemicals that you're going to be using is going to be the best for a cold pack. So you want the one that has the largest decrease in temperature and at the same time at the best cost point. So those are the two variables you're considering. So we're going to do a sample calculation to calculate the heat from ammonium chloride and then some of the other numbers you need to crunch for this. So for my mass, I use 2.62. Now you're supposed to use 2.5, but hypothetically, if you use more mass than you're supposed to by accident, you're supposed to use that number in your calculations where I didn't put the chemical back. So that's where this 2.62 is coming from. If you're able to get 2.5 exactly, perfect. But if you're not, not a big deal because you'll still get the right answers. All right, so your mass for the situation, so remember it's MC triangle T. Your mass is going to be 2.62 plus use 25 milliliters of water, right? Now, you know that there is one gram per one milliliter. So if you do your little T chart, you get 25 grams uh, plus 2.62. Uh, it's going to give you 27.62 grams because remember, you're supposed to use the total mass of your sample, not just the mass of the chemical or just the water by itself. So it should be 27.62. Uh, um, then multiply that times your C, which is 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. And your change in T is going to be T final minus T initial, so 18 minus 22. So you basically have 27.62 grams times 4.18 times negative 4. Now, since the temperature is going down, you expect your final heat to be a positive number because the chemical in water, you have to flip the sign, and it's endothermic in this situation because the temperature is going down. Remember, what's happening is that the chemical is absorbing heat from the water in order to break its bonds, and as a result of that, temperature to water is going down. That's what you're measuring, temperature to water. So let's do the calculation, 27.62 times 4.18 times 4 negative gives her answer which is negative 461 uh, for our purposes right now we want to keep two numbers right at a decimal point that's going to be our usual routine for now it's going to be 8 1 uh, joules I rounded it up because 8 0 6 is bigger than 5 so you got to round the number before it by 1 that's a negative number right now remember, so this is the Q of the water. You want the Q of the chemical. So Q of the chemical is going to be basically a flip-flop of this, which is 461.81 joules. So there's your answer. That's your heat. All right, so some of the calculations you're supposed to do, you're supposed to do joules per gram. I'm sorry, uh, heat per gram. So that's one of the calculations is this, right? Uh, heat per gram. So for the heat per gram calculation, you can take the heat, which is 461.81 joules, and you can divide it by the number of grams of sample, not the total grams, just the sample, because you're trying to figure out how many joules this massive sample is going to produce. So you divide this by 2.62 uh, grams. And when you do that, so we're going to flip the sign for this, right? We made it positive, divided by 2.62 we get 176.26 joules per gram so there's the units is joules per gram uh, so we do this calculation make sure you put the right unit at the end the other calculation you need to do is dollars per gram and you're supposed to do for each of these four chemicals. The, the intent of this is to figure out which one of these is the most cost effective. So the one that has the lowest cost per gram is going to be the cheapest chemical to use. And a preferable one because you don't want to spend more than you need to to make a cold pack. So you got to factor that into um, comparing this to your four chemicals to see which one gives you the best combination of cost and efficiency in terms of getting you the temperature decrease. So in this situation, it's going to be 1,000 grams. We do for the ammonium chloride grams. Uh, that's the grams. Your dollar amount is 13.90. So 
So dollars per gram of the situation, we're going to clear this. So 13.90 divided by 1,000. So our cost for this is going to be 0 0.014. Once again, two numbers. Zero is not a number. So when I say two numbers for our decimal point, not two numbers other than zero. Unless, of course, this is like 0 0.10. That's fine. I will deal with the reason for that next unit. But for now, that's what you're going to go with. So this is going to be the cost. So it's going to be 0 0.014 per one gram. So that's your dollar amount per gram, which is pretty cheap. Uh, just note that for the remaining chemicals, you do have to change to grams first. These are all prefixes that you should be able to convert into grams and then do the division from there. And those are the calculations you need for this particular lab.